Hi, my name is Anne Marie, and I'm an information security consultant with Digital Logic Solutions located in Toronto, Canada. In this video, I'm going to tell you about five tips to help you jumpstart your career in information security. They are number one, get hands on practice, number two, find your local community, number three, subscribe to your influencers, number four, read about information security in books, and number five, volunteer to participate in something IT or security related. I hope you find these tips helpful. I'm going to describe each of them below. There's tons of references and so you're going to want to check out my show notes which are um, below this video uh, for links and more information. If you have any comments or any additional suggestions, perhaps you want to contribute your own tools or books that um, you recommend, then add them in the comments below. So let's get started. My first tip is to get started by getting hands-on practice doing security things. I recommend downloading some free and open source security tools so that you can get started. Think of it as uh, self-directed research. This will help you grow in your knowledge and experience and also help you pinpoint where your interests are. Uh, what are the things that you enjoy do doing um, and what are some of the challenges that you or problems that you like to solve. Uh, so this is a great way to get started in your InfoSec career. Uh, the tool that I recommend that you download is Kali Linux. Uh, it works in a, it's a complete operating system with tools uh, already uh, installed on it. And uh, you can run it off a USB or locally on a machine or you can run it in a VM, in a virtual machine. If you're having difficulty getting started with Kali Linux, there's a great book that I recommend that you use. Um, so Robert Beggs has written this book uh, called Mastering Kali Linux for Advanced Penetration Testing and is available on Indigo Books and Amazon in paperback and also Kobo formats. So have a look for, for that online. So as you're working through Kali Linux and developing your skills, you'll find that you start um, developing the environment uh, and customizing it to your specific needs and your interests. And in this way, you can develop your ultimate testing tool um, that hopefully you can use for years to come. Tip number two is to grow your community. It's important for you to be involved in your local community because that will indicate to your employer that you can remain current, that you're plugged in, and that also it could indicate that um, you can collaborate both inside your organization and outside. Some of these communities that you'll be participating in might be outside of hours, and uh, so getting involved in your community demonstrates that you have a commitment to your profession. Uh, being involved in the community also indicates that you're able to collaborate both inside your workplace and outside, um, so you're exposed to a variety of viewpoints. Knowing the right people might not get you a job. This isn't about cronyism after all. But it does mean that if there are people that your employer knows and trusts, and they know and trust you, then um, that will vouch very well for you in the workplace. I recommend that you get a mentor, and this would be somebody who's going to help you one-on-one. -on -one. It might be by email, or um, perhaps you're in communication over the phone, or you're meeting up at community events. But your mentor can really help you uh, getting started in your information security career. For tip number three, I recommend that you subscribe to the influencers. And uh, there's a variety of places on social media that you can find the influencers in information security. Uh, we have LinkedIn, Twitter, um, podcasts, emailing lists, and webinars. So I'm going to talk about each one of those just a little bit. Uh, on LinkedIn, there's a number of groups that you can join that are of uh, interest to information security professionals. There's one called the Information Security Community. Uh, there's one, for example, the Glo Global OWASP Foundation. And there's groups for pretty much every interest under the sun um, related to security. So uh, just put in uh, some keywords for your favorite uh, security topics and you'll bound to find a group that's active and communicating. Uh, Twitter's got a lot going on. On Twitter, what I recommend doing is uh, doing some searches for your favorite security feeds. Uh, so for example, you might look at hashtag cybersecurity, 
or I like a hashtag data breach. I follow that feed quite regularly. And uh, as you see people who are annoying and talking about things that interest you, then subscribe to find out what they're saying. Um, so then you'll start seeing their tweets on your homepage. Uh, we also have podcasts and um, I've been driving, <laughs> I've been driving a lot in the past little while. So I drive about an hour to work and about two hours home every day and I get lots of opportunities to listen to podcasts. And my favorite podcast is without doubt the SANS Internet Storm Center podcast. And it's very short, I wish it was longer, um, but it's about five minutes and it's every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, also, I listen to Defensive Security. It's a, also a very good podcast, a little bit longer format. Uh, they talk for about half an hour and share uh, some news about the goings on that's happened in the past week in the news and information security. So I also recommend uh, that you follow some email lists and there's some good ones out there. Uh, my favorite emailing list is the SANS newsletters and there's a bunch of them. There's probably way more than I can even keep up on with a reading. And lastly, uh, we have webinars. So webinars are a great way to get some free training and to uh, be connected in the community. Uh, a lot of the re uh, webinars are hosted by vendors and uh, require that you subscribe ahead of time to get the information to connect uh, when the webinar, webinar is on. And, uh, Depending on the webinar, it, it will be available for download even if you miss a live event. Um, but take the time, take the time in your schedule to, uh, to join webinars because they're a great way of staying in touch. My tip number four is to read information security books. Um, I love reading and uh, I read quite a lot. <laughs> I read about lots of stuff. And I don't know how much reading about information security will help your security career, but uh, having some good old fashioned book learning will at least round out your knowledge. So here are some of my favorite InfoSec books that I wanna share with you. Uh, there's lots out there, uh, lots of choices. This is no way exhaustive, but just to give you some ideas of some of the things that you can be reading. Um, so my probably favorite book of all times is Hackers, Heroes of the Computer Revolution. And this is by Stephen Levy. Um, and this book is broken into three sections. So um, the first section is all about uh, the early computer users at MIT. And um, it's interesting to hear some of the history of how we got to where we are now. Um, uh, is very interesting. The second part of the book is about some of the early hardware hackers. So these were um, the guys and girls who were building computers out of kits, uh, mail order kits. It's very funny to think about it um, now. Uh, and it kind of covers the story of um, Steve Jobs and the, you know, the first Apple computer. Uh, and the last part of the book is all about um, the early computer game programmers. Uh, so that's a good book, Hackers by Stephen Levy. Um, next, I have this book, uh, I just got it, I guess it was two years ago, and it's called Navigating the Digital Age. This is free, you can download this online, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, so this is a book of essays that was published by um, in collaboration with uh, Palo Alto and the NYSE, and it's got... Um, uh, some really good essays on all kinds of topics in information security, mostly security management stuff. Um, there's something for everybody in here, so I recommend that you download this book and give that a read. Um, let's see, so more historical, so that's kind of nonfiction. This is historical biography that this covers, I've lost the cover. But it's called uh, The Fugitive Game, and it's um, a book about Kevin Mitnick, and so an important part of our history. Uh, there's a lot of textbook type books, and anything by Bruce Schneier um, is going to be good. This is Applied Cryptography. This is an old edition. Uh, there were some mistakes. I think they've been fixed in the newer editions. Um, but this is kind of a must-have for anyone's 
uh, bookshelf. It explains the various algorithms that are out there um, for cryptography. Um, and I have two more books. I don't know, I, I haven't read them, but I've heard they're very good. I've read a little bit of this one. So this is Breached. Uh, it's a cautionary tale of cybersecurity and intrigue. I'll give you a closer look. And it's by Dave Millier. He's a, a local to the Toronto area. So good stuff, Dave. I've started reading some of it and um, the gist of it is that uh, we have our cybersecurity expert who has gotten into a bit of trouble. So it's a it's a instructional fiction, shall we say. So it's a fictional story that um, has a message that we can all learn from, how he screwed up, how things got fixed, and, um, and how they were able to recover. Um, and lastly, um, this book too is also, I think, um, by a local, Swiped, by Adam Levin. Uh, so I haven't read this one yet, but it's on my bookshelf, and I hope to get to it soon. So this is about um, how to protect yourself from identity fraud. Okay, swiped. So I'll put those titles in my show notes. If you have books that you are um, particularly fond of that you want to share, um, make sure you leave a message in the comments. <laughs> my last tip, tip number five, is to volunteer in something IT related. Um, this is a great way for you to get experience that you can include in your resume right, aw right away. Uh, you can volunteer in something IT related and it doesn't even need to be um, specifically focused on information security. So uh, for example, you could join a club that you're interested in. Uh, it could be a political campaign. Uh, it could be your church. It could be something else that you're interested in and uh, volunteer for some IT component of it. So perhaps uh, you can help keep the uh, website up to date or manage the emailing lists. So no matter what is the IT component that you're helping to and volunteering to participate in, uh, you can work on the security aspects uh, for that volunteer experience. If you were managing the website, you could scan the website for vulnerabilities. You can make sure it stays patched and up to date. And if you're working on mailing lists, you can uh, ensure that you know you have mechanisms for people to unsubscribe so that you're not generating spam, making sure that people's personal information is secured. Uh, so there's lots of ideas for how you can get volunteer experience. Uh, I was really lucky. Uh, before I went to university, um, living in Hamilton, I joined the Hamilton Freenet, which was uh, a group of people who were interested in making the internet available to people for free. Uh, initially, it was the Hamilton Freenet was set up in the public libraries. Uh, so that was a great opportunity. The internet was just starting out and uh, it got me started on um, some system administration type activities with getting people registered. Uh, so there's lots of different volunteer activities that you could uh, be working on that are IT related and get you some skills using uh, information security right away and you can use this, these uh, experiences on your resume. So that's it. I've covered five tips to help you jumpstart your InfoSec career. And as a recap, they were number one, get hands-on practice. Number two, build your community. Number three, subscribe to the influencers. Number four, read information security books. And number five, volunteer for something IT or security related. I hope you found that useful. I'd love to hear your feedback. Please leave your comments below and I look forward to hearing from you.